Hey guys, welcome back to Ghoul's Garage. Today we're working on a new project. We're pretty excited to show our viewers. It happens to be a product from Zip Corvettes. And if you guess from the word Corvette, you got it right. We're still working on the 1972 Corvette. Only today we decided to change it from a manual brake setup to a power brake setup. And with this setup we purchased, it comes with everything you need. It takes all the guesswork out of it. Except maybe you need a little knowledge how to install it. Perhaps you haven't done it before. Well, that's why we're here. We're going to walk you through the process. We'll first start off by showing you the products that are here on the bench. And as you see, we got the power booster, the gaskets, the brake light assembly bracket, got the vacuum setup, runs vacuum off your manifold to the booster. They give you two new lines runs off your proportioning valve and those run into your master cylinder this master cylinder is a power master cylinder there are differences between manual and power when you're ordering lucky for us this comes as a whole kit so that takes a lot of the guesswork out of it there it also comes with a nice tool that helps you adjust your dowel setup for your master cylinder in your booster inside here there's a pin this is just a protective cover we'll be taking that off later this company has a really nice video out that you can check out go to that website right there and now explain how to use this tool we'll show you as well but this guy right here he does a great job of explaining why you want the tool what it does how to set up that just right so you get the best pedal for your brake application. So if we don't explain it enough or well enough for you to understand the viewer, I encourage you to go check out his link. He has a cutaway master cylinder in his video that shows you what we're trying to achieve. All right, the first step to our application and the power booster setup for the 72 Corvette is to get this gasket right here. Don't mistake this gasket with this one. We're going to be using this one in the first stages to our conversion kit. So let's walk over to the vet. Here we have the 72 Corvette that we're doing the power booster setup on. This happens to be a project that Ethan's taken on. So if you haven't caught any of his previous videos for the cleanup of the engine, the brake jobs and other applications and things we've done. Go back and follow along with some of those videos. Don't forget to like those. We appreciate the viewers doing that for us. Getting back to the brake setup, the gasket I told you to pick up off the bench. You're going to come right over to here. Already have your old boost, your old master cylinder off. There'll be two bolts here. You'll drive out. You just knock them out, let them hit the floor. There'll be two bolts at the bottom. You'll loosen up and take out. Now that we've taken those bolts out at the bottom, we're now putting this gasket back in place. From there, we're going to use our paint marker and transfer a line around here where the bolts are up top. I've already done that. I'll take that gasket back off. The area transferred that you see we're going to go ahead and cut that out all right so we just finished up cutting out the hole the recess that we marked out you could do this a few different ways if you take time you can use a few good sharp razor blade knives and cut out the razor blade then cut the insulation pad away you'll feel there's a little bit of a metal edge from the brake bracket behind it i cut it as close as i could to that and up around my template and then drilled those two holes up here. And then I used a step bit. And just reamed the hole a little bit more. Give myself some play when I'm trying to get that booster on. Next, you'll see if you want to compare. Everything should line up. What we're going to need to do for the holes. Okay. All right. We're going to pause with that. We'll have to go inside the vehicle. I'm going to try and show you that we're disconnecting the brake light switch. 
and the pedal connector for that rod on the outside where the booster would go because our booster has a new one. So I'm going to try and get a video of that for you or some pictures along the way. All right, it is tight under here, but definitely doable. Okay, right here. That's your brake warning switch. This nut was just right in front of it. I already took that off ahead of time. I'll just pull that switch right away. We have a new bracket here that comes in the kit. So we will be replacing that. Did you see the pedal moving? We don't want to disconnect that pedal. Try and get us some more light in here. You see the end of the bracket more here. Just up a little further. There's a pin right here that goes through. Try and get viewers there. Apologize for the quality. There we go. That pin right through here where my finger is. I'm gonna pull that clip out of there, pull the pin out, the pedal will fall, and so will this bracket. And then we can replace the brackets for the booster and the brake light warning switch. All is one. So because it's so tight under here, I chose to take off the steering wheel. Give the guy a little more room. So you saw under there, there was room. You could still reach up for the nuts and bolts to mount everything. Trust me, that's gonna be easier than removing these gauges in the dash. By far, I've had dashes apart in vets before and the wiring is just crazy hard to get back in place. All right, without uh, too much more detail right now, I'm gonna hand this over to Ethan. He's gonna remove that clip for me. So Ethan, you wanna get your tools together? Say hi to the viewers out there. Hi. Don't forget. All right, we just got this pedal assembly off from below. That's what it looks like inside there. Just right up in there. Neat little trick we realized is right from this hole, we could pop that pin. And I did get assistance. Ethan's down there somewhere. And then we were able to pull that pedal right out of the way. Now, if you see... Through the hole here, there's another bracket we're gonna take off. That happens to be for your brake warning light. The new kit has a different one. The new kit will go in the holes above this one. Then your new master booster bracket will go and hook up to where this is. So this gets taken off. A new one gets raised up here to the second set of holes. And your booster will mount right there with the pin and the locking carter key. Okay. okay, so here's a quick video down here what he's talking about. This bracket right here that goes for your brake light. When that pedal goes down, your brake lights come on. We got a new bracket in the kit. And it's gonna. this one's going to come off. And the new one's going to go up there in that second hole. That second hole is where that manual rod was at. So the new rod on the power booster is going to go right here. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. You see, this is the one that came off that pedal. So it goes up like there, like that. And then once it comes off that switch, the brake, brake lights come on at the back. You can see that's short. Then there's a longer one because this one goes up on that, the top hole that you took that rod out for the manual. This goes up there. So it mounts further up there. And you still hit your switch. So I'll be putting that on. All right, so far we've refitted the power booster. We checked that, make sure nothing was hanging up underneath. Everything looks really good. Ethan went under, tightened up the four bolts to it. We've got the pin to the pedal assembly in place. We still have to do the brake light warning switch. Uh, just the bolt will do that and readjust it. We can get that along the way. 
After that, we went ahead and fit the master cylinder in place for a test fit. We bent the lines and put them in place to make sure everything fits. After that, I've loosened just the top lines up. We're going to go ahead and remove that master cylinder. And next, we're going to want to reset the pin to the master cylinder length. This helps to travel for the pedal. The kit comes with an adjuster for us. Self-explanatory, it shows you arrow toward, towards the master cylinder in this pin. The pin does adjust in or out. What we're looking for is this dowel right here to sit right down inside the master cylinder. Make sure everything's flush. Make sure it's center of the master cylinder. No play. Tighten this pin up. Okay, I feel pretty happy with that. And then you just remove it. You'll come over to your booster. Set that right on there. And as you can see right down here, there's an adjuster screw. You can hold this to the back and adjust this in or out. You have just a little bit of length to travel right in there. Not very much. As you can see it's just got a little scrape. Everything looks good. You're ready to go ahead and start bleeding your master cylinder. We're going to get ready to start doing that now. We'll catch up with you in a minute. All right, we're back at the vise getting ready to bleed the master cylinder. As you can see, we have a hose kit set up for it. We made sure our bleeders are tight. The hose kit is coming back up into the cylinders here. We filled it with brake fluid. And in this instance, the manufacturers recommend not to push in more than one and three eighths the piston. This happens to be the piston back here for your brakes. So I went ahead and measured this piston according to this punch I'm going to use and put a piece of tape on there. So I know not to go past that line every time I'm doing it. I wear gloves just because it starts hurting the hand after a while. So we'll go ahead and push that piston in. And as we do that, you're going to see air is coming out. we'll do that until that piston starts getting stiff and then it'll be ready to reinstall on the car there's also bleeders here you can go ahead and bleed those out the same way but when you do you have to have an assistant open that up when you push in like so and then hold it when the brake fluid comes out then your assistant will tighten these then you can release i can feel it getting pretty stiff already which is good news We'll go ahead and bleed this some more, and we'll be ready to get back on the car. All right, we've just finished bleeding the master cylinder and all the brakes. We have everything assembled now. We have a pretty good pedal we're pretty happy with. Next, we're going to do the vacuum booster line. It's really nice to give you a new setup here in the kit as well, and some hose. In our instance, we took the cap off the back of the original carburetor, but the fitting size was smaller than here. So you may have to get an adapter from your auto store, did you see? Thread tape it, and you'll put all those together, tighten those up. I had to loosen the throttle cable to remove it, because that will also go into the bolt setup back here and hold very nicely. Once that's installed, then you can go onto your vacuum hose and the clamps that are also provided to you. You can cut and size that. How you want. We're going to go ahead and get this installed. We'll show you some pictures of it finished. We just finished installing the vacuum booster line set up. As you can see, we walked you through how the line assembly goes. We've trimmed down the hose a little bit. It was the only thing in the kit that we did have to do. Everything fits. Looks factory OEM. The new booster, the new master cylinder. Everything's been bled. That also looks like the wood came right off the showroom floor like that. We've tested the car. It has great brake response now. Much better than the manual brake. We're really happy with this change out. As an overall time period, how long did it take? How hard was it? I would say it took two of us about five hours to do. Maybe we could have sped that time up 
the second time around if we did it again. Uh, since there's a learning curve for us, obviously that took a little more research and time, but we really hope this video will help you when you're installing the new Corvette brake booster setup to power brakes. Don't forget to hit that like button, smash that subscribe button for five years good luck. Thanks for watching Gold's Garage.